guys welcome back to my youtube channel so today i have someone very special um her name's autumn do you want to like introduce yourself a little bit yeah hey guys my name is autumn like angie just said i am in my final semester of nursing school so i graduate in april with my bsn that's super exciting and crazy i am at a four-year university so like i just said i will have my bsn in april and so just so you guys know, Autumn and I are both getting our BSN and maybe we'll talk about this like further down the video, but we decided to take two different paths in regards to like our nursing journey. So I think that's something that is cool and we can talk about later in the video. So we decided to go on Instagram and ask you guys to ask us questions in regards to anything that you want to know about nursing school. So we have the questions right here and we're just here to answer them. So Autumn, yes. you're the guest, you first. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So I am going to read the first question. What did you do throughout nursing to help you decide on your specialty? So as of right now, I am really torn in between working in the neonatal intensive care unit, so the NICU, or a pediatric unit. But how I've really worked through that throughout my undergrad is just by doing a lot of volunteer work. Like I do volunteer a lot with children and more neurodiverse children. So those with autism or Down syndrome and just getting a feel for that. And then I also work as a nurse extern in the NICU. And that's with addition to our clinical experiences. So that's really helping me narrow it down a little bit. That's awesome, Autumn. And that's a good way to, I, I, I don't volunteer myself. So, and I didn't even know that that was an option that you can be a nurse extern. So I didn't, I was totally unaware. That's really cool. Yeah. Okay, so the next question that you guys asked is, someone said, how hard were prereqs? Honestly, I feel like the only hard ones for me was maybe chemistry. And then I had to take anatomy. Like it was like, split into three and I feel like the last class of anatomy was really tough for me and again when I started nursing school so I went to a three-year accelerated nursing program but since I was straight out of high school I didn't have any prerequisites so I had to take my prerequisites with the university that I was applying to and the reason that I decided to go to this university is because I was guaranteed direct admission to nursing as long as I took my prerequisites with them. And that to me was something very appealing. And I was like, oh, perfect. I have like my future set. And so, but definitely I think chem for me and the last class of anatomy only because these prerequisites are all accelerated too. So you're learning this in a matter of eight weeks. And to me, everything, it was tough. It was tough for me. I don't know how, how about you, Autumn? Yeah, I can't even imagine taking the prereqs in eight weeks, first of all. So kudos to you, girl. But for me, honestly, I think the prereqs were one of the hardest things getting into nursing school because like you said, it was that direct admission at your school. Whereas my school, you take the, pre the prereqs your first two years and then you have to apply. And there are very limited seats in the nursing program. So not only are you dealing with the stress from just taking those anatomy classes, you have this huge weight on your shoulders because it's like, am I going to get in? And you're worried about a backup plan and what's gonna happen. So just all of that stress made it very, very difficult. And I've heard other people at my school say that your first two years are really, really stressful. I agree. And not only that, but you have to keep up your grades yes. and your prereqs because at least they want a 3.0 and above. And if you don't have that, it's like, right. it's not a good look, you know? Yes. I still have heard people get into nursing school with like a 2.50, but mm -hmm. again, that's in more private universities. And I feel like private universities, you know, they have their own rules and regulations. So I feel like it, people have more of a leeway when they apply, but I know that a lot of universities do prefer a 3.0 and above. So prereqs is definitely hard and yeah. Yes, so, definitely. Yeah, Autumn, take it away. <laughs> okay, so kind of what we were talking about a little bit before, but what are the steps to getting into nursing school? Mm -hmm. So it really depends on the path you take. But so I am at a four year public university. I went to high school, graduated high school, went to the university, completed my first two years of prereqs as a pre-nursing major, 
And then the end of my sophomore year, I applied and interviewed for the nursing program at my school. So then my junior and senior years were all my nursing classes and my clinical experiences. So I will graduate in April with my BSN and then I have to take the NCLEX and then I get to be a nurse, which is so crazy. But Angie, if you want to talk about your journey, because I know it is a little different. Yeah, my journey is very different. So, and I feel like the main difference between our journey is that I went to a private university and yes, it's more expensive in regards to like going, doing your prereqs at a community college than transferring. I've heard a lot of people do that. So I think the main difference is obviously the money and then the fact that I was guaranteed that direct admission. So I had that as a backup. And for me, like I got accepted into, you know, it's called Nova NSU. And I didn't want to go to NSU just because I knew that the nursing program was competitive, the prereqs. It's like, if you don't get a good GPA, it's like, you're not guaranteed. Right. And I didn't like that. I didn't like that. I didn't have that security. So I, that's why I chose that private university and I went that route. And I liked that they didn't even look at my ACT or SAT scores. They wanted, all they saw is my high school GPA. I applied like a normal applicant and then I had to take an exam called the HESI. Mm -hmm. And so that exam tests you on like chemistry, anatomy, bio, uh, literally like the basics I remember the one big thing that I got tested on was like on military time because you know yeah. as nurses we use military time <laughs> That's so, funny. so for me I just remember that as being on the exam little tip for you guys <laughs> but for me it was like I didn't do so great on that exam and I still believe that I got accepted because one in high school I had a really good GPA I know it was like 3.75 around there but the reason they took me, I believe, is because they knew that I didn't take any prerequisites because people who take that exam, they have already done prerequisites. Mm -hmm. And I was like a newbie. And so they accepted me, I believe, to me with the condition of I was taking prerequisites with them, you know. Yes. So and you know what, like this is a lot of people don't know this, but I am very open and I tell people like I failed a chemistry class. And I had something personal going on, you know, it just, it wasn't a good time for me and I failed. But then I always tell people that, look, even with me failing that class, I was still able to make it to the Dean's list in nursing school. So, you know, like sometimes I feel that failure is necessary in order to succeed in life. And I just, I had a different outlook on it. Like, yes, at the time I was so sad and like, I cried because I saw all of my friends starting nursing without me mm -hmm. and in my head, I was like, you know what, Angie, it's just not your time to shine, you know? And now, like, if I would have gone on to, you know, I could have graduated by now, but then in my head, I'm like, I would have never met my best friend from nursing school right now, or I never, I would have never met, um, like, just everyone who I'm currently with in nursing school. So I just had a different perspective. And so the reason that I'm telling you guys this is that if you ever go through, like, a setback, definitely just change your mindset and look at it in a different way, you know? Yeah. Especially if you learn from it, like you were saying about your failures, as long as you take those lessons. For sure. I yeah. did. So yes. did you have any, like, did you have a time where you felt like, like you failed or did you have any setbacks to getting into nursing school? Yeah. I mean, honestly, my journey has been pretty linear, but I definitely know it is not always like that way. And I think I have been fortunate enough to have a linear journey because I dedicate myself and study a ton, like an absurd amount sometimes. But I also know that a lot of the times that doesn't matter. Like you could be studying, studying, studying. And like you were saying, an external circumstance in your life affects you. And it's hard to get over something like that. Like I had um a death in my family but that was when I was already in nursing school so kind of and you you guys will learn like your professors are so open and kind like they were very understanding of my circumstances so yes that's, well that's good that you had um that professor who was understanding so I, but I do have to say every professor in nursing school is different yeah, so some true. are understanding and some are just like too bad at least in like my and my case I've seen some like two types of professors right 
Um, That's true. Because at the same time, you are like, this is your responsibility. When you get into nursing school, like they expect nursing school to be all the way at the top yeah. of everything. Literally. It's, yeah. You're right. It's true. So yeah. let's see. Who, who's turn? I think it's your turn now. My turn? Yes. I mean, uh, someone put, I, oh, I like this question. Someone said, I'm very stressed for clinicals. Any advice? Honestly, when it comes to clinicals, here's my thing. And I, I was going to mention this because you were saying that you love to study and I love studying too. Like, it's just, people are like, how many, how many hours a day do you study? And to me, it's almost like an ongoing thing. Like yeah. I work out, I eat, then I study, take a little break, but back to studying. So that's what I'm saying. It's like an ongoing thing throughout the day. Mm -hmm. But one thing I've noticed, Autumn, is that, you know, sometimes I don't always get like hundreds or A's on my nursing school exams. Like I have my B's and my C's, you know, like I have bad days. But one thing that I have noticed is that even in clinicals, you can be the smartest person in class, but in clinicals, I've seen people that they can't even talk to the patient, you know, like you can be the smartest person and know all of your stuff, but in mm -hmm. clinicals, like you just get scared. And I've seen it happen. I've seen the brightest student, they, and they don't perform how they do on an exam than with the patient in the room. And so that's my big thing is that sometimes like you can't be afraid or scared you know and I've noticed that just uh how can I put this a grade doesn't define you and sometimes okay. your skill is better than how you perform like in a test yeah. and I, again I've seen this happen and my whole thing with like just not being stressed is you have to be confident within yourself even if you're not I'm not just saying like if you don't okay, let me put this. If you don't know how to do an IV and you're not comfortable with it, don't do it. But I'm saying like, if you're a little nervous, but you know how to do it and you know the proper steps, just try to be confident because you transmit that. And if the patient sees that you're not confident, like it's just not going to go well. So even if you feel a little nervous, just like mask it up mm -hmm. tell that you're confident. I mean, like tell yourself that you're confident and eventually you start to believe that, you know, yeah. and then you're going to start just doing it more often and you're going to just feel confident. But that's how, when I go to clinicals, I just tell myself like, you know, Angie, you studied this for like four years already. You're confident and you know this and you got this. And then I just, I start to believe that. And then it almost like de-stresses me. And then I just, you know, try not to think about it so much. But what about you, Autumn? Yeah, I agree. And another really um, important thing to note is at least for my university, your clinical instructor is always on that floor. And it's not like you are the one student being sent by yourself into clinicals. Like a lot of times we would tag a partner and go grab our nursing friend in our lab group if we didn't feel 100% comfortable. Or you could go up to your professor and be like, oh, hey, there is um, an opportunity to do some wound care, but I've never done it before. Do you mind walking me through the steps and really lean on that? But also your first day of clinicals, they don't expect you to be doing any crazy things. Like, honestly, in the beginning, you will be doing a lot of more nurse um, assistant work. So a lot of that bedside and hygiene care, which is really good because then you'll gain the confidence just speaking with patients and being on that unit. And you will become also comfortable with the nurses on that unit too, which are an amazing resource. I agree. And not only that, but I just feel like it's important to know, like almost like starting from the bottom and just seeing what eventually like the CNAs do, you know, that job is really important. And so just you doing that work that they're doing in the future, you're going to be, you're going to be thankful for them and you're going to value them more because you know that it's a lot of hard work, you know? So I think that it's just, it's good that they make us do that in the beginning. And it's almost like starting from the bottom and then you're like progressing up. <laughs> yeah, I agree because all of the nurses I've talked to are like, respect your CNAs, be, get, get in a great re relationship with them because they really help you out. So really starting from, like you said, their role and learning what they do will just help you gain that respect for them. 100% agree, definitely. So yeah. your turn. 
Yes. Okay. So time management tips. I really like this one because you totally have to manage your time. Um, what I personally do is I go on numbers and I have a spreadsheet on my computer and there's 15 minute time blocks. Mm -hmm. And I literally, well, the first thing you have to do is put in your classes in your clinicals on that number sheet. And then you just think about your other priorities. Like for me, working out is a really high priority and just really necessary for my stress relief at least. So I book that in there, like it's an appointment or a class as well. And then you also should block out your studying time and even when you eat and just little things and also make sure to plug in some self-care time. Like I have a time where I FaceTime my parents every week because I'm living away from home. My university isn't at home. So just things like that. And you need to stay on top of your schedule. I also really like to-do lists. And of course, you have to have a planner, a written down planner too. Like you just have to. Um, and to-do lists are really good because it just feels so nice when you could cross something off that list. And I like to keep a to-do list by my desk and by my bed because sometimes when I'm getting ready for bed I'll think of something that I have to do so instead of just laying when I'm trying to fall asleep worried about what I have to do I could write it down so that way I know I won't forget and it will get done uh, how do you like to balance it Angie for me planner I have a planner um, I like the numbers though that you do on like spreadsheet that's really interesting I'm gonna have to take a look into that yeah, I could send you my um template if you want <laughs> please do I would love that but for me I just stick to my planner and I write down like if I have an exam I'll write it in like a different color so I know that that's like priority and I'll mainly the color for me is red so anything I was red, red for exams yes is a priority mm -hmm. and and then I just prioritize like what I'm supposed to do based on on that if that makes sense so next one is Someone said, can I become an RN with a health science degree? Um, I feel like as long as you have the prerequisites that mm -hmm. nursing school requires, then I say, yeah. But again, yeah. you have to have those prerequisites. So you can have whatever it is, I don't know, those classes that you took in health science with additional, like let's say chemistry, anatomy, bio, Again, just what nursing school requires and specifically what university of nursing school you're applying to. So I would say, take a look into that. Yeah. So. Yeah, because also, I know we didn't talk about it, but another way to become a nurse is to get a degree in something else, to have your BSN and like this person said, health sciences, and then apply to a university for your accelerated nursing mm -hmm. degree. And I've seen a lot of people like they have a completely different degree and then it's like they do a two-year nursing accelerated program and that's it. And I'm yeah. just like, wow, I didn't know you could do that. So yeah, you can get your BSN that way too. Um, so go ahead, Autumn. I don't know if you have any yeah. other. Okay, so I will answer to do an associate's degree first and then a BSN, like what are the pros and cons for that? Mm -hmm. Like Angie and I have both said, we are in the BSN programs and I never did the ASN before, but just on surface level, what I could tell you is that BSNs are becoming really sought after now. And I have worked throughout my clinicals with a lot of ASNs too, but they are in school to get the BSN. So if you need to work and like you need that money soon, then yes, do the ASN. But at some point your hospital may require you to go back for that BSN. So it's all really up to you. If you need that money, then totally do the ASN and work while getting your BSN as well. Definitely agree on that. I've just noticed that a lot of hospitals, it's almost like mandatory that they yeah. want you to have your BSN. So, and again, you do get paid more for having a higher title. Mm -hmm. so, but if you know, then why are you going to waste time? Why are you going to waste money on the ASN when you already know that you want to be a nurse and you want to get your BSN? Yes. So I would say BSN for sure. So <laughs> yeah, um, I agree. let me see. But how are you studying for the NCLEX? Okay, I really like this question because <laughs> I get it quite oftenly. And here's my thing though. 
from the moment I started nursing school, I have been studying for the NCLEX. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that makes sense. People are like, so when are you going to start studying for the NCLEX? I'm like, I have been. Yeah. <laughs> I get the same thing all the time. <laughs> like, that's the whole point of nursing school. In nursing school, you are being prepped to pass the NCLEX. So I hope that in my four years of studying, I better, <laughs> I better pass that NCLEX. Yes. Um, I mean, obviously, once I graduate nursing school, I'm probably going to I've heard that it's best to take your NCLEX within max a month Mm -hmm. after graduating. It's just statistically better. Like they've done a study where nursing students do best when they take it right away and they don't sit and like leave it for three to six months. So I'm going to definitely probably just give myself maybe maximum of a one month like Mm -hmm. time period to study for Mm -hmm. the NCLEX. And I will be using UWorld and some additional notes, but that's how I'm going to study for the NCLEX. And then hopefully my prior knowledge of being in nursing school for four years will help me pass that at Clex, you know? Exactly. Yeah. And I think I'm with you on the U world. That's what I've heard is the key. So. Yeah. I heard U world is like, yes, the Bible. <laughs> yeah, for real. Um, answering, how do you balance maintaining wellness with your studies? I so if you that. guys, Yeah. So if you guys didn't know, my Instagram is ama.wellness. So I'm just really about that whole healthy mindset, healthy body, like everything. So you really have to think about it. Like taking care of yourself should be a priority because when you are on shift or at clinicals, you don't think about yourself for those 12 hours. That's the best way I could explain it to anyone else. So when you are not on shift, you need to prioritize yourself to make sure that you feel good because how are you going to properly care for others if you aren't feeling your best? And um, I mean, like I mentioned for me before, exercise is a really big stress relief too. And uh, a kind of comparison that I've been hearing a lot lately is when you go on an airplane and they're going through the little safety instructions about putting the oxygen mask on. They always say, put it on yourself before you end up helping those around you. So you really just have to put yourself first. And the um, like time management piece goes back to just planning your days and making it that priority for yourself. How about you? Because I know we definitely have similar mindsets, Angie, with like health and everything 100% Autumn I couldn't agree with you more and I love that little like put yourself first with the oxygen mask it's so true and uh, oh my gosh well so I'm just so happy that Autumn was like decided to do this video and you were just so up for it so one I definitely recommend for you all to follow Autumn on our social medias and I don't know if you're going to be creating like a YouTube but I'll definitely link everything down below for everyone to go follow you and I just want to say thank you for your endless kindness to me and again you guys I do recommend you go follow Autumn because she's such a sweetheart and she's also again in nursing obviously I hope you know that by now (laughs) she's a nursing major as well and it's funny because fun fact we actually went to high school together and we're about to graduate nursing school around the same time so it's just really nice to see us grow uh from being teens and now like adults it's just crazy yes it really is and angie thank you so much for allowing me to come on because i just love talking about nursing so much and it's great <laughs> getting to reconnect with you, someone from high school, and just share this passion that we have to really just help others and answer these questions that you guys have, because I know it can be hard to find answers. 100% agree, and if you guys like like this video, you want us to do more, let us know in the comments down below, like this video, subscribe, so that we know that, you know, we'll, I definitely love to make more of these, so just let us know, you guys, and leave a comment down below. So thank you so much. Make sure to subscribe and give us a like. Yes. <laughs> Bye, Bye guys.